Chodesh Tov, everyone. It's, tonight is, of course, Rosh Chodesh, Wednesday night, when we're recording this. And uh, I'd like to wish you all a wonderful good Shabbos. Uh, of course, I will not be in the shul this Shabbos because of the simcha that we have in our family. And I wish you all that you have an opportunity to celebrate Smachot in your family and that we join together only for good things. I'd like to welcome you to the few minutes together we spend on the Parsha. And this week, of course, is Parsha's bow. In Parsha's bow, it describes various attributes of the Karben Pesach. And we know that there are many aspects of the Karben Pesach, all of a great symbolic nature. I'd like to focus on one particular aspect in which the Pesach says in Perik Yudbe's Pesach Zion, the Lokhu Min Hadam, they should take from the blood of the sacrifice of the Karben Pesach prior to their eating it, of course, the Nosnu Alstei Amezuzos for Allah Mashkov, and they should put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel, the doorpost being the sides, the lintel being the top piece, Allah Botem Ashayochlu Oso Bahem, on the houses in which they are going to be eaten. There's another Pasuk, a little bit later on in Pasuk Yud Gimel, in which it says, Vahoya Adam Lochem Laos, and for you the blood shall be a sign, al habotim asher atem sham, in the houses in which you are there. Many people are under the impression that the blood that was taken from the carbon and smeared on the lintel and on the mashkov was put on the outside of the door, because God says, v'ra'isi es adam, and I will see the blood and pass over. But the mechilta points out so aptly, Hashem doesn't need the blood to be on the outside for it to be seen. And because the Pesach says, Ala botim ashayochlu oso bahem, and it also says, Adam lochem laos, that the blood should be for you as a sign, from there we learn that the blood was put not on the outside, but it was put on the inside. As Rashi himself quotes, that the dam was on the inside of the houses. Now, why was the dam necessary to be placed on the inside of the houses at all? Rav Sham Shavuel Hirsch, of course, explains that the doorposts and the lintel each serve a separate function. The doorposts are that which keep out the intruding forces of social graces and behavior of the world at large from coming into your home, while the lintel represents the roof, which, of course, protects us from the elements. We know that even if one has a roof over his head, one is not protected from the elements if Hashem does not protect from the elements. So by putting the doorpost on the lintel, we're demonstrating that it's not the lintel, but really God himself who protects our homes. And when we put the blood on the mashkov on each side, what we're saying is the blood which represents our relationship with Hashem as we are now free that relationship is what is going to protect us from the intrusion through the walls and doors of our homes of unwanted outside elements. The point that the Torah is telling us is that the dam, the blood, the expenditure, the life of the Jewish people is followed and held on the inside of the house. Yes, we go to shul, and yes, we daven with a minion, but the real Yiddishkeit, the real Jewish observance is the observance that we have within the home, our lifeblood, the daily living between husband and wife, between parents and children, between children and each other, and between intergenerational generational families. All of it, the family, is the crucible and the unit by which the Jewish people are built. You know, we're living in a great age of technology, and technology is, for some people, an idol in and of itself. They worship the technology. There's been a lot of talk in the Jewish community about how we should be dealing with technology. There are extreme elements that say all technology should be banned. There are other extreme elements that say there should be no holds barred on technology. But the Jew who has his blood on the inside of the doorpost, the Jew who lives a life of Judaism, according to the Torah, a real Yiddishkeit, recognizes that we can filter out that which comes into our homes. 
we're the masters because we have now Hashem giving us the freedom that we got out of Egypt. We are the masters of our destiny. And we are the ones who control that which is technology, that which is anything in this world. Knives are very dangerous, but we use them. We don't ban them. We learn how to use them. Wine can be enslaving. And yet on the day of freedom, we drink four cups of wine to demonstrate that we know how to use it. Technology can be a great boon to all our lives. But when it's in our homes, we are the ones who are the masters of the technology. And by our being the masters, we're putting our lifeblood on the inside of the doorpost. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu sees our home as being a home filled with all the elements that HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants us to have. When there are new instruments that come about, they can be used for good or bad. The printing press. Look at all the inappropriate literature that is available to mankind. But do we ban all books? Look at all the inappropriate things that can be seen on the internet, but we don't ban it. What we say is utilize it like a knife, like fire, like water, like food, like anything. It depends on how we use it. And if we invite Hashem into our homes and we expend our lifeblood by being loyal to Him, we are the ones who are going to make our homes filled with the idea of God and we won't fall into the trap of being enslaved by the Egyptians, enslaved by the technology, enslaved by the Avodah of technology or anything that comes our way. We are our own masters because we have been given the freedom and the Pesach carbon symbolizes that as we put our lifeblood on the inside of our homes, both on the Mashkov on the top and on the Mezuzos on the side because we have a home that is predicated and dedicated to the ideals of the Torah. Hashem should give us the opportunity that as we come to this Chodesh Shvat and we're about to celebrate the new year of the trees and we're about to participate in so many wonderful upcoming things as spring begins to feel itself, make itself felt in Eretz Yisrael, we should see the flowering out of the freedom of Klal Yisrael as they learn and utilize all that comes into their homes. Have a wonderful Shabbos.